Welcome to the ProKitchen Software Dynamic Design Showcase tutorial. If you're familiar with ProKitchen's print templates, they are now customizable and render dynamically. Instead of spending hours generating images of doors, finishes, hardware, and accessories, creating screenshot after screenshot of plan and elevation views just to create a presentation for your customer, you can now do it in minutes with the Dynamic Design Showcase feature. Everything is saved and dynamically renders right into Pro Kitchen without any additional software or revisions. To get started, I'll navigate to the Presentation tab at the top and find my Dynamic Design Showcase icon in the ribbon. Before I launch the Dynamic Design Showcase, I can format my page settings, adjusting the page size, orientation, and margins. Selecting the number of pages I want to start with, I can always add and remove pages later. Choose to include my print stamp form. Click the stamp form button to review or change the information included. Select grayscale if I don't want to print color and add a border if I'd like. For this example, I'll keep them all off and click the dynamic design showcase icon. Using the toolbar, you can print to a printer, print to a PDF file, save the template to your computer, or save as to save the template under a new name and location, Open a previously saved template, close the existing template, Pro Kitchen will prompt you to name the template if it's new, add a new page, or delete the current page. Everything in your showcase is displayed in a frame called a view. These view tools let you add a view, clear a view, add a comment view, add an option view, or delete the selected view. Editing tools let you undo an action, redo an action, display the grid, turn grid snap on or off, lock and unlock all views, turn headers on or off, turn footers on or off, zoom in, zoom out, or manually adjust the zoom, a mover tool to move an item inside of a view frame, change the scale size of an item, or change the page that you are working on. I'll start by adding my logo to my footer. Click the footer icon and the yellow outline at the bottom of all my pages will appear indicating the footer area. Right click inside of the footer area to add a view. Notice the options, image view or text view. I'll use image view to add my logo. My cursor has turned into a crosshair and I can now add an image view inside of my footer. Notice if I move my cursor outside of the footer area, it turns back into a pointer so I can't place the view outside of the footer area. I'll click once to start drawing the view frame for my logo. Dragging my mouse to create the frame, I'll click a second time to place. Locate my logo on my computer and click open. I can freely move the frame anywhere inside of the footer outline by clicking and dragging it. If I change the size of my frame, the image will adjust accordingly. Notice my logo is repeated on every page in the footer area. Now I can start creating my first page. First, I want to add some text to title my presentation. Select the comment icon and notice the tools that appear. I'll click the T for text, move my cursor to the template, and click to launch the comment attributes. I can use a saved comment or type a new comment. I can change the font, font size, font color, and make the typeface bold or italic. Click OK to place the comment on the template. I can freely move the comment frame around the template page by clicking and dragging it to the position I want. Next, I want to add my dimensional plan view. Click the Add View icon, place my cursor on the template, click to start drawing a frame, and then click again to set. Inside the frame I just created, right click and select Add. Notice the options, plan view, elevation view, 3D, 3D HD, BOM, and custom image. Plan views and elevation views display the views I have in my design. The choices are the tabs I named in my views when I was designing so I know exactly which view I'm selecting. 3D and 3D HD will render the view according to which options I select. BOM, or Bill of Materials, will display the Bill of Materials, and Custom Image will let you import any image file. Since custom images are imported, it will not be dynamic. In other words, the image you import won't change unless you clear the image and add a new one from your computer. Custom images should only be used when the image isn't dependent on the design file, like your logo or comments. I want my dimensional plan view, so I'll select it from my plan views list. 
That's not the option I want, so I can right click the frame and select clear view to remove the view inside the frame and add the correct one. I can freely move the frame anywhere on this page of the template. If I change the size of my frame, the image will adjust accordingly. I want to fill in the frame more so I can adjust my ratio, readjust my frame, then use the mover to position the view inside the frame where I want it. Click the mover tool again to turn it off and return to adding and editing more views. Now I'll add a nice 3D HD rendering, something that will really stand out and impress my client. So again, add a view, draw my frame, right click, select add, 3D HD, and I want the top view at 90 degrees. High definition is photographic quality, so it takes more time to render, but definitely worth the wait. Once my HD is rendered, I can move the frame to adjust the position. Notice whatever frame I'm working with is red to show that it's selected. I'll label the views on the first page using the comment tool and select a new font color to make them stand out. Once I'm done adding the views on the first page, I can turn off all the frame borders by right clicking on an empty area of the page and unchecking show all borders or I can turn frame borders off individually by right clicking each view and unchecking show border. Notice the footer border is independent, so I'll always have to turn that one off manually. On my second page, I'll add my customer's options. I can easily add their choices by clicking on the add option icon and selecting an option from the drop down list to place in my template. I'll start with the cabinet doors and drawers. Select the door. These settings are taken directly from the global specifications you have set in your design, so not only is the color displayed, but the door drawer style is displayed also. The frames are transparent, and in other words, there is no background color, so I can layer the frames on top of each other, and since it's transparent, I can still see the frame contents behind it. I'll add the rest of my customer style options. It's as easy as picking an option from the drop-down list, clicking on the template to place, and dragging the option to the position you want. The options include not only both of your base and wall doors and drawers, but finish colors, countertop textures, backsplash textures, wall covering textures, flooring type, ceiling textures, top moldings, light rail moldings, and toe kicks. Double click on an option to open the attributes or select the option, right click and select attributes. With the options attributes, I can edit the header text, edit the note text, edit the header and note font, font size and font color. I can also adjust the frame's border style by choosing its color, line style and line thickness. Click OK to save the attribute changes. I'll set the attributes for the rest of my added options. If I don't want to show the description for an option, I can easily turn it off by right clicking on the option and selecting hide description. I can also adjust the option's image size by selecting image size and then increase or decrease. To finish off the second page, I'll add a 3D HD view of my stove wall above my customer's options. Once it renders, I can fill in my frame with the render by right clicking and selecting scale to max or manually zoom in or out. I'll right click on the templates page two to turn all of the borders off. I want to keep the, bo keep the border on my 3D HD render. So I'll right click the HD view, select show border and then double click to open the attributes and adjust the border style. I'll finish off my showcase by adding my elevation views and molding options to the next two pages. Again, add a view, draw my frame, right click, select add, elevation views. Grab my molding styles from the options drop down list and set their attributes. Lastly, I'll add my customer bill of materials next to a plan view labeled with the bill of material item number so I can quickly point out the items in the floor plan. Because of transparency, I can place frames on top of each other, but if the images overlap, I can change the order the frames are layered by right clicking. Send forward will place the selected frame one layer above the overlapping frame. Send backward will place the selected frame one layer behind the overlapping frame. Send to the front will bring the selected frame to the front of all overlapping frames and sent to the back will bring the selected frame to the back of all overlapping frames. 
I'll turn off my borders for the last page and then save my dynamic design showcase template to open and reuse in the future. I'll also save it to a PDF because any changes will render the next time I open this dynamic design showcase template. Now I'll close my dynamic design showcase editor, minimize my Pro Kitchen, and preview the PDF I just made. There's my presentation, ready to show my customer and designed in less than 10 minutes. So, I've presented this to my customer and of course, they've made some changes. So I'll open my design in Pro Kitchen and make the requested changes. First, they've changed the finish color, so I'll set that in my global options. Second, they've made countertop and wall covering adjustments. I can change those in my design settings under the textures tab. Lastly, they want to remove the plant by their patio doors and keep only three bar stools. I'll render the 3D to double check my changes. I'll exit the 3D viewer and launch the dynamic design showcase and open up my saved template. It will take a few minutes to re-render my changes and rebuild my showcase. Notice the plant and one bar stool has been removed from the plan views and the cabinet finish color has been changed. On the second page, my options have changed and my countertop option needs some readjusting. I don't have to show the frames, just unlock them to enable editing. I'll decrease the image size to make it match the rest. On the last pages, you will see the changes have been applied to my elevation views as well. I'll save this new presentation as a PDF and we can compare it with the original side by side. On the right is the original presentation and on the left is the revised. As you can see, the changes are clear. There, a full showcase designed, presented, revised, and presented again in less than 15 minutes. How much time can Dynamic Design Showcase save you?